Cavalier faithful, welcome back to Cavs Encapsulated, episode six. Welcome on into the Cleveland Pulse. We have a lot to talk about. If you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you haven't because you're tapped into the Cleveland Cavaliers basketball organization. The last four games, some good, some bad for the Cleveland Cavaliers. A pretty good win, and when I say pretty good, I mean great win on the road against the Philadelphia 76ers in the group stage of the NBA in-season tournament, and then kind of set up for failure the night after, have to travel home, you know, lay a dud against Miami, lose to the Lakers, and then have a gutsy win last night at home against Toronto. Felt like a game that, you know, we could have lost multiple times, a game that I've seen us lose in the past, you know, even some points in this season. So kind of a mixed bag these last four games. I feel like The tensions are high. If you look on social media, if you look on, you know, X, if you talk with your your buddies and your friends who, you know, follow Cavaliers basketball, I feel like we're in a weird stage where a whole handful of people are saying, it's fine. We're not healthy. We haven't been healthy all year. Let the rotations marinate. That would be Justin. And there's valid points and merit to that. I feel like you're, you have a whole other camp of people who, for better, for worse, are looking a little bit further, maybe, you know, going a couple layers deep. She really kind of taking this team, you know, like an onion, you know, you got the top layer. Is it the injuries? Is it the problem? You got JB a couple layers, you know, lower Then it's the rotations. However, I want to go to Logan first. How do you feel? Are you in the middle? Are you, are you in the middle of this fence, Logan? And I just want to hear your opening thoughts. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about the social media. You brought that up, Jeffrey, and what people are saying on social media. I saw a tweet, I don't know what it's called now, a post on X, um, that said the Cavaliers in 2014, 2015 started 19 and 20 and they finished 53 and 29. Okay, here's the difference between those two teams. One had LeBron James, one does not. Let's go ahead and put that out there right now. Um, I sound really pissed off. I would be more pissed off if we did lose to Toronto last night, but I'm not. Uh, I'm just in a weird situation because I look at this team. And I would say in each episode, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think we've had a signature win come each episode that we've had so far. Whether it was a Sixers game, the yes. Knicks game, or an opening night win against Brooklyn, we've had a good win in each one. So we know it's there. We know sure. that this team is there. But there's three things that go into making a team good and superior. Okay. One is availability. Two is attitude. Three is coaching. That's the way I look at it. If you want to put four and say you're good at home, that's something we can talk about later because the Cavs haven't been so good at home so far. We were this good year. at home last year, though, and that didn't mean a dog in the we playoffs. The last year, overtime games, too, were a bright spot as well. So, you know, there, the, this is what I'm going to say. Let's talk about those three. Availability, we got none of that. Your your best avail- best ability is your availability, right? That's what everyone says at any job interview or um, anything like that. It's true in the NBA as well. We can't stay healthy. Not really our fault. Maybe it is. Maybe that comes back to coaching. Which brings me to the next point. We don't have coaching. We don't have coaching. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I, I've had enough. I like JB. I think he's a good coach for a team that is on the rise like we were. But we need to take that next step. I'm sorry. I don't know who the answer is. So I'm not sitting here saying fire JB. But I'm sitting here saying something's got to be worked out at the head of this. Attitude. I think this Cavaliers team has the right attitude. That's what I like. Guys like Max Struess have come in and have really just provided. So far this year, my two bright spots, our bigs are really playing really well together, better than they ever have. Two yes. Guys. Max Struess has paid dividends going after him. But our backcourt, our guards, the guard play, the rotation of play, the of guard play, of coaching with the guards that we have at our disposal, I think that's kind of a mess right now. Donovan Mitchell started the season hot. He's kind of cooled down. He's kind of really struggled, if we're being honest. Darius Garland's finally coming around. When can these two guys be at their apex at the same time on the same court? If you're not available, you won't get it that way. And mm-hmm. if one of them is not available, you're not going to get it that way. So to me, this team still has so many question marks. And I, I, I'm tired of this, like, talk to us in 10 games. Talk to us in 20 games. Talk <laughs> to us in 30 games. Eventually, I'm going to say, I'm going to talk to you in 82 games. Why are you 500? Right? And, you know, I I don't mean to sound negative. I really don't because, like I said, I think this team has the right attitude. But things like coaching, things like availability, that'll kill and tank a season that looks so promising at the beginning. Plenty of time for them to write this shit, but there are some things that, to the eye test, do not look right with me. 
Okay, valid points. I absolutely Stay loved it, actually. Points. And let me let me do a quick interjection before throwing it to Justin because I'm curious because I think he's going to keep it the most positive this episode before I absolutely lose my mind after him. <laughs> Logan, let's take your standards and just for a little interjection, let's do availability, coaching, and attitude. If we go by those three standards, I think coming off the top rope for me, I think Max Drews has been our best player all season long. So I just wanted to put that out there. I think he's been coachable. His attitude has been good, and he's been healthy. Justin, go ahead. Yeah, well, Logan made a lot of great points and not oh, any that I really want to fight against. Um, for me, you're not fighting against JB, so you're you're on, you're on the JB. You, what, what's just what's, what's your JB there. status? JB. What's your the JB, JB status? the JB status for me is still he's a 500 coach, he's an improved coach throughout mm -hmm. his seasons and everything. But I, I, I'm not like saying that Logan's wrong, I just think that when you look at this team and you look at what they actively went out and did this past summer. They went and acquired guys who were going to shoot the three ball. We're shooting the three ball more than we ever have. Guys are on pace to break records already to, uh, for how many attempts we've taken, how many attempts they've personally taken. Mm -hmm. And for that matter, what were we really good at last year? Pick and rolls. What are we yeah. doing this year? Not a whole lot of pick and rolling and trying to work in a lot of guys who we've brought in for specific reasons. Niang is constantly a mixed bag of like, man, do I think he's got it sometimes? And man, do I think he really doesn't got it at some time? Struess, like Jeff has said, has easily been the MVP of this season. Darius Garland, for like five games, shot under 10% from three. Donovan Mitchell, in the last two games that he's been – uh, not the last two games that he's been back. No, right. Well, it's because he was gone, we played well. I guess yeah. it's probably really confusing. Correct. <laughs> uh, Mitchell, in the last two games that he's played, has sucked. Um, Tristan Thompson, the guy that we, you know, made a whole lot of we jokes about that. when we signed him as the 15th guy, is surprisingly actually very serviceable. There is a lot going on with this fucking roster. Now, even I can't pinpoint, like, where, where can we make a change? And now – Here's the thing that Jeff will get into. Consolidation is wholly an idea. Now, how are you going to go about that? I'm I'll interested to see how Jeff will go about it. If he says Mitchell it'll by himself, I don't think that's a, a thing. I think I know where he's going to go, but I'm keeping I'll Mitchell out of it because I'm keeping Mitchell out of it because you know what? And, I, and you know what? I got a lot of respect for our viewers and I got a lot of respect for the Cavs fan base. I do, but I'm keeping Mitchell out of it. I, I can go, I can go down the timeline where, oh, where, yeah. Mitch, where Mitchell's, where Mitchell's on, you know, he's a part of it, but I'm going to keep Mitchell out of it because I don't want to hear people crying. Who oh, he wants <laughs> to trade down in the year two. Okay. So Justin, anything else before I ramble? Yeah. But here's, here's the thing. You get a good – or you get a, a distribution of minutes last night. Who was missing in those minutes? Logan, who was it? CPJ. You know who it was. CPJ. CPJ. There is – there are some guys on this roster buried, buried behind guys who are not better than them. CPJ might be the sixth, seventh to eighth best player on this team right now, and he didn't yep. see minutes. Am I overreacting because he's played a couple of good games? Maybe That's no, holy, it's wholly possible, but at the same time, just like I talk about with Jeff, we are not in the position with the Browns to be tanking games with guys that should not be on the field. We should not be tanking with guys who shouldn't be on the court for the for the basketball team. And here's my point: if you consolidate guys like Isaac Okoro and Karis LeVert, it opens a perfect opportunity for a. a I was going to say. Harris Porter Jr., Craig Porter Jr., to and other guys like maybe an Amani or a Ty Jerome, who you brought in for a specific reason. We don't know what that specific reason is right now, but you brought him in to do something, and he's a guard. Those other two guys I listened, guards. The guard play on this team is horrendous uh, all over the place. Yes. And that's what it is for me. It's like, is it JB just not knowing who goes well with who? Is it JB thinking, hey, I have 9 to 11 guys I can play. I'm going to play as many of them as I can and as many different groups as I can. Like, there's no set rotation. It's the most infuriating thing. But there's been so many injuries and just so many, like, Darius Garland, next train goes out in the game. Donovan's out for a couple of games. Like, Isaac's been out for a 
whole holy amount of games now and it's like <laughs> you just never that's know cool. and that's my biggest issue it's just like if you're gonna consolidate people that's fine but don't consolidate the two best players on your team you know so okay so i'm gonna bounce around a little bit here logan go logan the 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 bicker staff thing like this is and me and Logan have talked a lot one on one these past four games, and it's been it's been a, a largely eye opening experience for me because he's a smart basketball mind. But what I will say is that this is why I was banging the table to get rid of JB this off season because you in I put myself in the in the shoes of the general manager. Both of these guys know this. I don't think about being a player. I don't think about being a coach. I think about having to make decisions at the top level where we're going to go to the championship or I'm going to lose my job. You can't – you're stuck with JB now for the rest of the year because you have too much risk in getting rid of JB and promoting JJ Outlaw or promoting Luke Walton, and it gets worse. If you got rid of JB this offseason, and I understand if you'd think Nick Nurse wasn't a good head coach, if Mike Budenholzer wasn't a good head coach, but there were people who have won championships that were free agents in the coaching market where you have plausible deniability if you're Colby Altman to be like, okay, we brought in a head coach who's been to playoff runs, who's been deep in the playoffs, who've won the finals. If it doesn't work, it just happened to not work. You can't do this with J.J. Outlaw now. You definitely can't do it with Luke Walton. So J.B.'s job, I think, is as secure as ever, believe it or not, because at the end of the day, if you get rid of J.B. now and you don't bring in somebody with better playoff history than him, better regular season record than him, you look dumb. So I think his job is actually really secure now. If he got fired, would I be kind of lit up the first, like, 24, 48 hours? it would be a mixed bag for me, but I'm like, okay, whatever. That's point number one. Point number two, and I'm going to do a whole long video about this because I don't think I could even articulate this point in one Cavs encapsulated upload. I'm going to put it like this to try to not ramble. We are in the era of the NBA, and we've talked about this, and this is widely agreed upon across the full entirety of spectrum, Cavs fans, NBA fans, basketball fans. The super team eras are gone. With that being said, you might be saying, "What? Well, you know, why are you bringing this up? What's your point?" JB coaches this team like it's eight or nine years ago, and it's a super team. He coaches it like he has Steph Curry and he has Kevin Durant. And if Steph plays thirty nine minutes and KD plays forty minutes, you're probably not. You're going to lose eight games all year, or nine games all year. Buddy, look at the couple of recent NBA champions. Denver was like eight or nine deep in the finals last year with Michael Porter doesn't tur- doesn't pass the ball, whatever his name is, and Bruce Brown. Like these guys are your seventh and eighth, ninth guys off your bench. JB's like, oh, this and that. And last night was just, I don't even, I, I'm glad we won last night. I will put that. But Craig Porter Jr. not playing last night is just like I see too many fireball offenses from this guy. Criminal. And and to and when Justin says consolidate, I talk about consolidate behind the scenes. And this is what he means, and this is what I mean. Isaac Core, I think it the time he's played is the best basketball he's played in his career. I'll say that out loud. Karis Levert, I think, is playing, you know, what we're paying him for, probably a little bit better than you know, some previous years he's had with us. That's all fine and good if it works. It's not working. You can't just put these athletes out here. It's not football. You can't just like get the best athletic talent and be like, oh, okay, we'll figure it out from there. I need this roster to go to strict one-on-one replacements. When Garland goes out, Donovan Mitchell just shouldn't be, oh, let's just bring the ball up with Donovan, and then the offense is stagnant and it looks like trash. When Donovan goes out, it shouldn't just be like, oh, Darius Garland, now only is he facilitating the offense, but he's our primary scorer, he's our primary playmaker, he's our primary yeah. ball handler, he's guarding the best guard on the other team. You can't have this happen. I need Craig Porter Jr. to replace Darius Garland. I need a competent backup five, and I get it. Tristan Thompson has played serviceable basketball. I will agree with Justin there. I need a confident, a competent backup five to replace either Jared Allen or Evan Mobley when he's off the floor. Even the guys who you went out and got, Niang coming in as a four, not going to work. Struess as a three, 
the roster built, is he more of like a two? He could play either position, but it's like, you can't just, JB wants to shift all these guys just, oh, we'll take one guy out and just move the roster and then backfill. I want strict one-on-one replacements. If that means moving Okoro, if that means moving Levert in a package for a roster that makes more sense, for a trade that makes fiscal and you know the return is good, I'm in for it because it's not working consistently. And Justin makes valid points, the injuries, this and that. And I felt like, and I felt like it was a coincidence. And that's why I haven't included Donovan Mitchell in this conversation, because trust me, I could go on 15, 20 minutes, you know, getting a huge package for Donovan Mitchell. And when we're not playing, you know, that good to end this year, and then we lose in the first round again, and then we lose all of our trade leverage next year, because he doesn't sign an extension in the offseason. Then teams are like, oh yeah, we're just going to wait for him to walk. We'll give you the biggest package. And then we lose trade leverage and assets. It's all going to be fun and games until then. Just saying that, by the way, November 27th, 2023. But I just think it looked better with Mitchell out because like you had Dean Wade playing good basketball. He was a comp. He's like a competent four to back up Mobley. He's a small four, but it's like one-on-one replacement. You had Tristan coming in behind Jared Allen, Craig Porter Jr. Seeing minutes with injuries. So the moral of my story is just make the roster make sense. And I think they tried to do that in the off season, but it's still just weird. It's still just wonky. And we know that the guard play has been inconsistent and that's your biggest thing so far. Logan, what did I miss? Let's go back to the positives a little bit. I want to hear your thoughts. We got games going forward. What do you think? What do you think this team could focus on going forward that you're like, when you watch them, you're like, this is what we need to do going forward. And that this is why we have success. Before I do anything, I first want to say, please, I mentioned LeBron James earlier. Yep. I love LeBron. Me too. As most Cleveland fans do. Um, I'm sorry, though. It's been six years. Can we stop with the like hype videos every time he comes home? <laughs> Welcome back, King. Okay. Yes, LeBron is home. He's not the home team. And that's the way I look at this. That why is Logan team? the one saying this <laughs> not me? Dude. It 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 really <laughs> Logan fed up. Thing, though. It irked me. I, I'm so happy whenever LeBron comes home. It's always it's a little corny, though. It's a little corny. We love LeBron, but dude, it's get time. The dude a statue. <laughs> it's <laughs> time to move on. Like, okay, this this video is because he became the all time leading scorer, guys. It happened last season. <laughs> like, are we just making up an excuse to make a video for LeBron? Everyone knows he's there. I thought it was a really nice gesture that they had welcome home LeBron outside of the Lakers locker room. I thought that was a great gesture. But I don't want this guy to feel so comfortable and get cheered every time he's kicking our ass and sending a backdoor pass to Jackson freaking Hayes uh, to dunk it on our freaking head. And we're welcome home LeBron. Oh, look at the play LeBron just made. The man is up. I love LeBron. I do. No, you are right, though. They tweeted that video out like not even an hour after we lost to them. And I saw that, that too. And I'm, I'm like, we just lost to them. That goes to one of my big three things. Attitude. That may not be the player's attitude, but that's the freaking organization's attitude. We are a new team. We're trying to do something without LeBron James for the first time in two decades. Yep. We have to let him go for now. He'll yep. come back. We'll give him his – we'll retire his number. We'll give him his statue. We'll give him his flowers. We already have, and I will continue to give, give him his flowers. But when he comes into Cleveland, he is not who we root for. And I want to make that known to everybody. I will clap up LeBron from St. Vincent St. Mary High School in Akron, Ohio, number 23. <laughs> I will clap it up 100%. When that ball goes up, we're coming to kill. You know, we're coming to get LeBron. I'm in. LeBron. Okay, I'm done. Moving yeah. forward, just like Jeffrey said, what can this team do? And the, and the slap in the faces, little t- little tangent, the slap in the face is that, you know, he's been – the second time he's left us has been six years and you haven't won a yeah. playoff series. So that's yeah. the slap in the face to me because yeah. you got all these fans on X, on Facebook, talking to, the you know, their aunts and their uncles. Oh, LeBron, oh, LeBron. And I agree, Logan, but you haven't done anything. You act like this team has just won a playoff series in the last two or three years. You're going on over half a decade without a playoff series win. Is this the culture? Mm-hmm you want in the city certainly not me that's just the, i'm sorry i had to get that off my chest i was gonna put that as part of my tangent earlier but i thought it deserved its own little segment Love moving it. forward with this cavaliers team this lebron list cavaliers team we gotta start winning some games at home man okay. I, I, I i i thought this was a great opportunity to grab some games the miami game i can forgive i can't forgive giving up 70 points and getting destroyed in the paint by the lakers 
Lakers are a good team. They were in the Western Conference Finals last year. They have talent all around, but that game was disturbing to me. And I didn't get to watch a whole lot of it. And I, it was part of it was because I was busy with the holidays and with friends and family. The other part of it is because like, it's hard to watch. I'm like, you see it happening and I don't see adjustments being made. That goes back to coaching. One of our three we were talking about in that Raptors game. I'm sorry. Are you all happy with that? Are we pleased with that? The Raptors are a good gutsy team. They're tough to put away. You're at home. I want to dominate teams. This team is eight and nine now, not, not the Cavs, the Raptors. And I would almost argue they've overachieved already this season. I get it. Any team in the NBA is tough to put away, but we were down 10 in that game. We needed Struess to score 20 points in the third quarter. And we still were up a couple points going to the fourth. We guys score 20. We we're up a, a, a bucket going to the fourth quarter. Tristan Thompson had to come in for seven minutes and write the ship. If I'm relying <laughs> on Tristan Thompson to write the ship, we are in trouble. That's all I got to say. So this team has to buckle up. And, and, and go back to the basics. Go back to pick and roll. If the pick and roll isn't there, you have Struess on the wing. Shoot a three. Don't change the whole offense. Yes, let's get quicker. Yes, let's push the ball. I've been dying to have that. But in the half court set, don't go away, go away from what works. Use your crowd. Use your home court advantage. Get those cavalanches because, boy, do I miss them. They're not really – what's the phrase? They're a dime a dozen. What's the word? Few, they're, they're very, few and far between. Few and far between. Sure, let's use that phrase. Someone say. My point is – you need to find yourself. You need to find your identity. Teams usually have their identity 15 to 20 games in. Sometimes it takes a little longer. But we didn't make like we didn't make overhauling changes this year. We added complementary pieces who we thought were complementary. Some of them have been, some of them are still on their way. But this team has to get some home cooking going. They have to beat the team they're supposed to beat. We haven't done that very well so far this season. Those are the two areas that you got to improve. Beat the teams you got to beat. Take advantage of your home court. Justin. I want to go to future matchups. I want to talk about how bad we are predicting this team, but I just want you know let you. Oh, that. well, there you go. That brought my other point. I just remembered it. <laughs> That's the other way you know the eye test isn't right with this team because I'm five and twelve. <laughs> that that sounds like an ego <laughs> point. <laughs> and it could be ego, and it could be. But I'm sorry. I think even a casual Cavaliers fan would have taken similar predictions to what we have so far. What we have done so far. We, this, uh, yeah, you, yeah. Well, I don't know why you think of us as anything more. Yeah. <laughs> we're just guys. We're just guys being dudes. We're just dudes. We just have to be on the screen. But I'm sorry. No, I, I'm five and twelve, and I think there's seven games that I'm like, you really lost that game. Like seriously, that yeah. bothers me. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of things to be taken into account, Justin. I know we kind of been freaking out here. We got a LeBron. <laughs> we, you know, we don't do it's a lot of LeBron cool. rants though, so I'm in for it. But what you know, what what have we missed? Have we missed anything? Anything you want to get off your chest? I was while that was going on. Uh, I was trying my best to like look at what's really changed from last year to this year statistically, and we're playing better in every category except for just scoring outright. Yep. And it's just like I'm curious because I, I know it was like probably two weeks now that I sent that tweet where it's like everyone against us is hitting everything, and we are just missing everything. I'd like to see where that is now, like in terms of how things have gone since then but it really just looks like and obviously it's like logan is saying the eye test um it really just looks like we are losing games off of like we're just not knocking down the shots we should be knocking down and to be fair there's a lot of guys shooting really well from three point right now uh darius garland's gotten back into the 30 into the high 30s now but right now suddenly um it's it's one of those things where it's like I, I go back to my original point that Jeff asked me about, like, hey, are you on the JB thing about, like, am I not high on him anymore? No, it's really about I think there's too much or not too much going on, but there's something different from the past two years going on than there was this year. And maybe it's just taking a lot longer to gel than what other teams have in the past when they've acquired new superstars. But maybe it's it's kind of going the same way that Logan made a point. And again, he's right. It, we're not a LeBron, Kyrie, Kevin Love team anymore. But um, there are very talented players, whether you're a huge Darius Garland guy like I am or a huge Donovan Mitchell guy like most NBA fans are or whoever, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Isaac Okoro, Karis LeVert, anyone, Max Strews, anyone you want to name on this roster. There's a lot of talent. And like I said, um, maybe there's too much of it. 
And like Jeff said, there is consolidation. There is that urgency that this team needs to make a move either at the head coaching position, which I don't think we're at quite yet, or with the roster, which I think when you go out and you acquire Niang and Struz and you re-sign LeVert, you know, those are three guys immediately that are, you know, for sure playing, never going to lose time no matter what. But guys like Okoro, um, guys like Craig Porter, guys like, I hate to even say it, like a, a Merrill, you know, the guards on this team that are just kind of like, there i can do without you know coro's on the on the fringe lavert is a good piece for like logan said i think a week ago to the lakers hey go get Rui and someone else from them and give them a coro and lavert i don't know but they're this team is just taking its time and that's frustrating i think it's very frustrating um but <laughs> I'm going to be the voice of patience somehow. I'm not a very patient man in, in, in reality, but um, <laughs> gotta do I'm, I'm going to somehow do it with this uh, casting. And I think the funny part about Logan's rant was I genuinely, and I've said this before, I believe I said this before, I like these Cavs more than I like the 2015-2016 championship winning Cavs, mainly because I think a lot of it is like a homegrown kind of thing. There's a lot of guys sure. here who – bought in there's a culture of like i guess like young enthusiasm that i just like i haven't felt in a very long time with this Cavs team and um but again super young new pieces injuries and trying to play a different style of offensive basketball i just think there's a lot going on fair enough i mean i think there is a lot going on we got patience we got we got the urgency. I think it's probably something, you know, more similar to being in the middle, which is kind of kind of common for, you know, professional sports. But that all being said, we're gonna switch over. We got we got games coming up here. And I just want to I just want to put a personal statement out there that if anybody associated with the National Basketball Association in any manner watches this channel. Just reach out to me for the for for your format for you know an in season tournament for next time because I could have had something cooked up in you know 48 to 72 hours that's better than this nonsense that we have going on here. So we have the Hawks tomorrow in season tournament group stage. Oh wow, like let's just put all these fancy names on things and just maybe the fans will buy in and the players just want you know a million dollars. Nobody cares, nobody cares, nobody cares. Then we're playing the Trailblazers, team that we're more talented than. Then we're at the Pistons, a team that you're more talented than. Now, here's the interesting thing, and you don't want to lose games. You'd like to win every game. But if you lose tomorrow, it's not the end of the world. Because if you see here from Adam Silver, <laughs> if we're not in the if we're not in the in-season tournament, you know, uh semifinals or quarterfinal, whatever they're calling it, you have December 2nd, you have the third to the tenth off. So you get a week off, you get a bye week in the middle of the season, like the NFL, as Justin stated earlier, before we started recording. With that all being said, he kind of flex over to this abomination. Good Justin at 7 and 10, still in the lead because he held the lead last weird. week. Then me following up right behind him, pick up a game on him this week. Had the Heat win in this game. Back ter Still criminal on back-to-backs. Absolutely criminal on back-to-backs. JB mm -hmm. needs to figure that out. Logan at 5 and 12 in the basement. So mm -hmm. we're going to start with Justin. Let, I just want to hear. Was that necessary? Was the in the basement necessary, Jeffrey? I mean, you're not, I, you're, I, you're not in the not, attic. Not in the attic. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I want Justin. What do you, you know? The in-season tournament. Just give give that a grade. You know, from an A to A plus to F minus D. You're giving it. A D, you're giving it some points. What points is it getting? Uh, you gave it what put its name on the paper because it got a cool cool little graphic with we get Cleveland a buy, champion. We, we get a buy, we, we lose this game. <laughs> we get a buy. We can oh, get. So it's uh, a D. Maybe we get a whole roster back, but That's um, yeah, this thing. Stinks. Um, <laughs> it makes no sense. Uh, the layout's awful. The players the don't get suck. It. The court the jerseys suck. suck. Jerseys um, suck. Yeah, and it really makes no effing sense. But uh, still a game that counts to regular season. Um, True. God bless me. L Lord knows uh, I want to say Cavs, Cavs, Cavs. Right. And... Uh, I feel like there's two. Fuck it, Cavs, 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 Cavs. Okay, fuck okay. it. Let's go. Have Come on, played now, baby. Ten and ten. Played Atlanta. No, no, we have not. Oh, because we played like two or we played five teams. So, here's a quick question: Are we healthy? Are we healthy? Because I never know when we make these predictions. 
Well, Logan, does not matter? What is Dean oh, Wade's it well, now? What is Dean you know? Wade's injury? <laughs> um, I was gonna say, does anyone know timetable? Anything scary. out for a month like a Coro? Like, well, we'll, so find yeah. out, we'll find out a few months that he needs another month. <laughs> See, half of me wants to wants to say Hawks, but the other half of me is like, we'll probably win this game by like twenty nine, sneak into the in season tournament, probably make a deep stuff. run, probably get people you know gimping by the end of it, and then it'll be December second or third or whatever this next game is or the eleventh, and you know it'll be like nobody won anything, we lose in the semis. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't know. I just don't think we're good enough. Go, I just don't think we're good enough. That's a good pick. Quite right. Like we're, we're we've never played Atlanta exquisitely well. Yeah. But I, I will I, I will I will I will I will make it simple for these last two. If you drop one of these two games after that, we're gonna you got, you got issues. You got issues. We're fighting. That Blazers game feels like a trap game. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say. Oh, it, it is. But great Logan, teams win Pistons trap game. games. Pistons it's not the are terrible, Pistons Logan. Time. They have to get healthy. They'll be all right. They're, they're not. <laughs> Logan, they're not there yet, brother. <laughs> they're coming, though. Yeah, they, they, they got any pieces I can take from them. I mean, they they a lot of people in, uh, Isaac Okoro for. Why do I feel like Isaac Okoro belongs in Detroit? Kind of just seems right to me right now. He's I don't really know why I'm it. thinking that. Okay, go ahead and put me down for, for the Blazers and Pistons. Put me, put me Cavs, Cavs. Okay, we're very we're very casual Logan, with this. Just you right now, brother. I'm There's, fully aware. Um, he's got a marinade here. You know, would you like me to quickly go outside and see where the wind's blowing? If it's going north <laughs> or south for this prediction, <laughs> it's kind of cold out. I mean, it'll take me a minute. It is cold. I mean, listen, guys, I'm five and frickin' twelve. I should take chances, um, but I, there really isn't any which way to go here that's taking a chance to me. I feel like this is up a, a frickin' coin toss because we don't play them. Logan, well. here's here before you before you make your prediction for this one. Let me just preference this with. If the Cavs do win this Hawks game and go with the rest of our predictions in general, that's a four-game win streak. I'm pretty sure we haven't had that this year yet. So just something to keep in mind for you. We had one. We had it when Mitchell was out four straight really? games. Really? Yeah, I'm a little certain. You know what? I'm just going to leave them. See you. Yeah, see you, man. Um, just, what am I doing here? It was just three. Damn it. No way. We lost. Oh yeah, the Kings. Game. Oh no, no, this was three in a row because we also had Sixers. This was yep, four. Yeah, was four. Yep. Was that right? He's right. He's right. He's right. Oh, oh my! Today, God. today, Junior. Trey oh. and Dante Murray are still working their stuff out. Mitchell and Garland are still working their stuff out. I'm hoping on a home court we work our stuff, work ourselves out a little bit better. I'll go Cavs. Oh my God! Just said he had. Just I said know. Gotta I get better at, you guys at home. Being like, I should have taken the Hawks. I wanted to take the Hawks. I do this every week. Did he take the, being... Wait, did he take the cast? I was looking at yeah. the. Oh. Yeah, I took oh, the yeah. cast. Said early in the episode, we got to get better at home. So, you know, he's kind of following up that narrative, but it did kind of admit we're not that good at home. And then we're playing a game at home. And then, but okay, l- 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 I think, let me take, let me do, let me do one positive before we, before we do final thoughts here. Wait, are we in the in season uh, tournament jerseys? Because we're. Uh, Those aren't in season tournament That's jerseys. They're sick. But they, but they, but every. Yeah, we're gonna court, have the ugly. No, the, our court's not even ugly. Our court. All the courts ugly. match up with the jerseys. Isn't that how they did it? That's how they go back to the Indiana game. Yeah, but I've seen some teams also not wear those jerseys during their in-season tournament games. Uh, maybe I don't know. I think, like, no, I, think I don't think they like, did it like that. I think you just made that up. Oh, uh, maybe I did. I don't know. I don't think this has anything to really do with our. I mean, not not that it doesn't have anything to do, but I don't know. We partner with Playhouse Square. I don't think the court is Playhouse Squarey. Well, it is. It's a rectangle. However, um, we won last night, and Don Mitchell only scored ten points. I know it was an ugly win, but you didn't rely on Don Hero Ball to win you the game last night. So I would go with, with that positive for a final thought. Uh, I'll go with uh, it's a long season, and I've been saying that for quite a long time. So don't worry about it, folks. We'll get it figured out. Just a reminder for everybody, LeBron James plays for the Los Angeles Lakers. <sighs> yes, we know. We are rooting for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Where's, Ky- where's Kyrie? He's Dallas. a Cavalier legend. I will love him forever. I don't want to hear any more about how <laughs> glorious LeBron James is. All the Cleveland Cavaliers are struggling. If we were 13 and 4, throw him a parade. (laughs) Throw him a parade. Throw us a parade. We're 9 and 8, folks. 9 and 8. It's time to get serious. 20 games in, better start figuring it out. So if you want a positive from me, we got three (laughs) games that we should win. We haven't been very good at beating those teams yet, those games we should win. But maybe that just starts right now. Here we go. 
I don't know. That's all I got. Uh, here, we, here we go. I don't know. That's, oh my god. Uh, we gotta close it on that one, Jeff. Close it. Close it. <laughs> we'll cut that part I love out. it. Well, we're 17 games and I just I don't I, I don't it. see myself making it with you know sane the rest of the season. So yeah, if you've lasted through us mumbling and rambling for this long, you know, 30 plus minutes, we do appreciate it. Hit that like button and subscribe down below, making our way up the ladder through the thousands of subscribers appreciate you guys every single one of you comment down below are the calves you know do they do they have you know issues is it you know just surface issues is it is it deeper thoughts on jb are there going to be you know moves made at the trade deadline eventually i know it's early to be talking about it but i think you got to talk about it and yeah send this to somebody who also watches cavalier basketball and as usual we appreciate you being the pulse of it all